Hi guys, and welcome back to Reed's Readers with your host, Clinton Reed. And today, as you can tell by the title, I've got an exciting announcement for you guys. So why don't you guys come cuddle up, get your hot cocoa ready. Put on your sweater, your sweatshirt, whatever it is. And come join us for the Merry Book Miss <laughs> announcement. Mm. So I kind of made a mess. I'm going to go when I made this too. I'll have to clean that after this. I forgot boiling milk. I don't trust that behind me, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move this over here. I don't 100% trust that. So, welcome guys. It's that time of year that you guys all love. It's another season of fun. God, I forgot how much foam is on a hot cocoa. Hmm. But it's really good. So I've got my handy dandy book here with all the lovely prompts. We're doing something a little different this year. We're doing what we like to call the 12 tropes of bookmas. Every prompt is simply a book trope that you guys gave to us or we looked up and gave to like the most popular ones out there. And now you guys can interpret this however you want because we understand that a lot of these do stem a little bit more romance heavy. And I know a lot of y'all aren't big on romance, but I think this is something that's gonna be really fun and I think you guys will really love. I'm gonna put that right there. And then at the end, I'm gonna talk to you about some extra additive goodies that we're doing this year and I hope you guys will join us for but let's just get into the prompts and then we'll get into everything else so <clears throat> I have at least two books I know in one category we have three but I have at least two books for every trope now, these are not the only things out there in the world that you can read for these. This is more if you're having trouble. I had trouble coming up with a few of these. Because I realized I don't read some of these tropes anymore. So, let's just get into the tropes and have fun. <coughs> Oh, before we get into the tropes, if you guys don't know what Mary Bookmas is, I co-host this readathon with two of my favorite people, two of my closest friends, Mel from Completely Melanie and Kehlani from Kehlani Simply Me are back as my lovely co-hosts and both will have videos on their channels. I'll link both their channels down below so that you can go check out their live shows, not live shows, their, um, their announcement videos. Go check out their channels because if you're on my channel and you have not subscribed to them, who are you? And how did you find me? Because that's how I want to know because it's because of these two lovely ladies that most of you guys are here. Trust me, I know. It's okay. But we do four readathons each year, one for every season. If you're watching this announcement, you probably are a return person for another lovely season a thon. We do do Fall into Reading a thon in usually September. We do Merry Book Miss in December. We do Spring into Reading a thon in March. And then the whole month of July, we do Summertime Reads. 
So I am super excited. Our group book is something we've never done before. These prompts are something we've never done before. The lovely 12 tropes of book mess. Um, we have an extra additive weekend thing, which is going to be super exciting. Um, yeah, let's just get into the tropes and let's have some fun. <clears throat> so trope number one is the chosen one trope. It is one of those tired out. A lot of people love it. Um, when you think chosen one, you always think Harry Potter. But I have at least two here. This is one of the ones that I have the hardest with. I realize I really don't read chosen one tropes that much anymore. So we will have to see what I pick for this one for myself. Because I will tell you every book that I'm about to show, I don't think I'm going to read any of these. Well, one of them I will, but it's not the one that I'm showing. You'll understand when you see my TBR. But for the chosen one trope, first I have Shadow and Bone, which is the first book to the Grishaverse. She can... Elena discovers that she is the chosen one because she is the opposite of the Darkling. She can control light in the dark, which I think is a super cool take on the chosen one trope. And then you've got my pal. I know she's kind of problematic at times, but Rainbow Rowell's Carry On, which is pretty much a fan fiction of... Harry Potter on if Harry was the worst chosen one of all time ended up with Draco and if Draco was a vampire and a love thing which is just amazing and I may reread this for this so I can continue on and finish the series because I have book two and book three and still haven't read them so I might actually do this one for this but if you have any suggestions for Chosen One tropes, comment those down below. I'm always looking for new recommendations for everything. So, this next one, I have two choices for. Granted, we are stretching this a little bit more. Challenge number two, is, or trope number two, is the second chance trope. Second chance romance, second mother having a second chance with her kids, which reminds me, I have another recommendation for this. We can always go with the cousins, which is a grandmother having a second chance with her with her grandchildren, or even cousins having a second chance of coming together. You can do a second chance romance, like Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey, which is a married couple falling in love again. Or what I will probably be doing is giving an author a second chance. Like I read this author's previous novel, The Wives by Taryn Fisher, and I absolutely loved it. But I kind of want to give something like The Wrong Family a second chance, which is Taryn Fisher's next novel, to see if The Wives was a fluke for me. Does that make sense? Or you can read some an author you absolutely despised, which would be me giving Lee Bardugo a second chance after Ninth House. Or me reading another Victoria Schwab book because I read one earlier this year and it's one of my favorites now. So interpret that as you will. Have fun with these challenges is all I've got to say. Um, trope number three, which I think is Mel's personal favorite. We are calling this trope Bookception. You have bookish characters introduced. Like, say, uh, Pages and Co. when they introduce, like, Alice and Dorothy and them come back in. Um, someone works at a bookstore. Um, there's a book within a book. Or there's a book within a book within a book. Stuff like that. It has to have something to do with books. Such as you could do something like Fangirl by Rambo Rowell. Where she is writing 
fan fiction, which is a type of literature. And throughout it, you do get clips of Carry On. You can do something like Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, if you're more into like a thrillery kind of mood, which is about a girl whose dad was famous for writing a novel about this house. And then after he um, died, she inherited the house. And throughout it, you have excerpts of the novel within it, which I think is super cool. Or you can do something like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, where it's about a girl who sells her soul to the devil to live forever, but the curse behind that is no one remembers who she is until she meets a boy in a bookstore, so. There's some options. Now we're on to trope number four, which is either friends to lovers or enemies to lovers or friend or enemies to friends to lovers or friends to enemies to friends to lovers or lovers to enemies to friends back to enemies to friends to lovers. The, that whole trope in itself. Now, I almost beat the fuck out of myself for not doing this until right before I sat down to start filming, right before I started setting up to film this. And then I screamed at myself. So, for friends to lovers, you can do something like Heartstopper by Alice Oseman, which lovely graphic novel about Nick and Charlie, friends that fall in love. And something I will be, no, I am slowly becoming known for on this channel is Heartstopper and um, TJ Klune. So, and I am perfectly okay with that. Just saying. Or you can do something like Serpent and Dove. This is the bookish box exclusive covers. You can do something like Serpent and Dove, where a witch hunter has to marry a witch. So enemies coming together to fall in love. Next we have trope number five, small town. Now this one, you can stretch it however you want. You can do a small town romance. There's a lot of thrillers that are kind of set in small towns. Now there's fantasies set on islands, stuff like that. <clears throat> for Small Town, I have three different options for that. We have another Karen McManus, which is Two Can Keep a Secret, which takes place in a little small town called Echo Ridge. So I think that would take place. Or you can do something like one of our previous group reads, The Serpent King by Jeff Zintner, which takes place in a small town called Forestville, in um, Tennessee. Or you can do something that's set on an island called By the Sea, something like Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. All have amazing stories. All have the warm, fuzzy, small town vibes that you're really wanting. Next, we have Prompt number, or trope number six, which is games slash competition. You can do something with sports. Heartstopper would work for that. Or fence would work for that if you're wanting more of a sportsy. I went with something like the charm offense, which has a reality dating show, which is a competition in itself. Or you could do something that involves puzzles, like The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I love this type of dynamic of doing something that involves like a competition or a game or like you have to solve a riddle, a puzzle, stuff like that to me is just fascinating. And I cannot wait to see what you guys choose for this one. 
prompt or trope. I keep saying prompt because I'm so used to prompts. But trope number seven is reader retelling. Something that is based on something else. You can always do something like Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. I really wanted to represent this one because this one technically isn't a full-on retelling as a continuation, which I would count continuations to a, it's like a retelling of that world. Something like this or Dorothy Must Die by Daniel Page, stuff like that would really work for that. Or you can do something that is a straight up retelling, like A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer. 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 Uh, I can't speak today, guys. Which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, which also has um, cerebral palsy representation. There's also queer representation in the books as well. It's also a queer represented. So you can do something like this. Trope number eight is fake dating. Simple. There's not really a lot you can go with that. So I have something like Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, which is a fake dating romance or my personal favorite fake dating, because fake dating is one of my favorite tropes. <coughs> Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall, which is an amazing fake dating romance between the son of a, of a famous rock star and... and a guy who needs a date to his sister's wedding. Strike up a deal, which I think is real. You have not read this. Oh, cannot wait for those ankle husband material. Oh, oh, that's one of my most anticipated reads, but uh, but yeah, fake dating, simple. It's one of my, my favorite tropes, so. And trope number nine is close quarters. Or as I like to call it sometimes, the one bed trope also works for this. You need something that is kind of more in the confinement. Um, technically, this is not a close quarters, the inheritance games, but I would count it because a lot of the story takes place in this mansion. So it's kind of interesting there. Or you can go with something like Five total strangers stuck in a blizzard inside of a car. One of them is a killer. I know um, Kehlani didn't really like this, but I'm still super interested in it. And it's something that I think I might use for this. Who knows? Or you can do something like one of my favorite books of the year. Conventionally Yours by Anna and Beth Albert which has the uh, two infamous rivals, one epic road trip. Like, they're stuck in a car. Um, there is one bed. It is enemies to lovers as well. It also gives you queer at a Comic-Con convention, which I think is super cool. So you can use this for multiple. Um... Trope number 10 is the found family trope. To me, if you find that niche of that friend group that you feel is more important to you, that is your family, that is, to me, one of the best things in the world. I'm luck lucky to have found my coven, in a sense. They are the people who... They are my pack. You have my coven, and then you have people like Kehlani and Mel, who are really my pack, who we can, we're honestly there for each other. Even if we can't physically be there for each other, we're there emotionally, spiritually, in every sense of the words. 
Um, like I was saying about Pack, something like TJ Klune's Wolf Song is a really good representation of a found family to me. Yes, it starts off where the entire werewolf pack is actual family, but it slowly becomes so much more than that. This is my favorite book family of all time. It has my favorite book mother. It's my favorite just all around family. But I also wanted to give you guys another TJ Klune, which I didn't realize I chose two TJ Klunes for this. Something like The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, an orphanage f with special kids. This is about such a heartwarming story of a bunch of people who come to the people who face adversity come together and love one another and it's such a warm heartfelt story that I feel like if you have not read this or this you're really missing out and I really hope you guys are joining along with us for the pack along on my channel where we are reading the entirety of this series and our live show for this should be coming up on the 6th after this I don't know if it's the next video you will see but it might be on my channel no, I think there's one more video coming before this, but very much representations of found family. And if you guys have any um, re recommendations for found families, comment them down below. I'm always looking to find the best found family books I can. Just, I'm trying not to cry. Okay, and then we've got Trope number 11. Royalty. Who's shocked that I would recommend Red, White, and Royal Blue? Where the son of the United States falls in love with the Prince of England. Read it. Oh, this is also a good representation of enemies to friends to lovers as well if you have not read this. But I also, you can take it a fantasy route with something like Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyung, which is about a girl who gets picked to be a paper girl for the king. So a book that just has royalty in it or royalty in the title like King of Scars or, um, Kingdom of Ash, stuff like that. Any of those would work for this. Last but not least is our trope number 12. Which is our group book as well. Our final trope is Animal Companion. You guys asked for an Animal Companion. And for the first time in season of Fawn, we are doing a middle grade for our group read. And our group read is Wild, Wilder Lore, The Accidental Apprentice by Amanda Foodie. And if the name sounds familiar to you, she did write... She is known for the Ace of Shades series, which I might use this one for games and competition things. Because I still need to read that. <coughs> this book has been pitched as Harry Potter meets Pokemon. And I'm so intrigued by that. But let us read what uh, is about. <clears throat> the last thing Barclay Thorn, Barclay Thorn, that's a name, ever wanted was an adventure. Thankfully, since he is an apprentice to Dolshire's mushroom farmer, what? Sorry. Mushroom Farmer, the most exciting mission he's ever faced is searching for the elusive Morning Tide Moral. 
until the day Barclay accidentally breaks Dolshire's most sacred rule. Never, ever, ever stray into the woods. For within the woods lurk vicious, magical beasts. To Barclay's horror, he faces a fate far worse than being eaten. He unwittingly bonds with a beast and is run out of town by an angry mob. <coughs> Excuse me. Determined to break his bond and return home, Barclay's journey deep into the woods to seek help from the mysterious lore keepers, people who willingly bond with beasts and share their powers. But after braving a dangerous apprenticeship exam and discovering that his own beast might not be so bad at all. After all, Barclay must make the, a difficult choice. Return to the home he's always known or embrace the adventure awaiting him. And I am just so freaking excited. There is a dragon of kinds. I think that might actually be a drake. And there's like these little leaf creature things. Just, I am super excited for this. And Amanda Foodie will be joining us on Completely Melanie's channel at 3 p.m. Eastern on January 1st to discuss this book with our live show following at 8 p.m. Eastern. I keep having to remember I gotta do it Eastern times. At 8 p.m. Eastern that day for us to have fun. I hope you guys join us for this, but we also have something exciting. On the 4th and 5th of December, we are going to be having a Christmas movie marathon. Both days we will be premiering and doing three Christmas movies each one of us has chosen a Christmas movie that we love and hold dear or that we just really want to watch this year on over on um singer.com um once I realize how to do everything I will link I will put all the details and stuff down below so you guys can understand it is a free website um, but you do have to make an account and you have to have access to watching Netflix. Unfortunately, to join us watching the show. It is so fun to be able to watch something real time with your favorite people. But we will be doing both at 3 p.m. Eastern on the 4th and the 5th over on Scener. Scener. I want to say it's Scener.com. Might be Scener.net. I don't know. All of that will be linked down below. Along with Mel and Kehlani's channel. You, you might want to go over to Mel's channel. She'll have a lot more details on that part. Because it's something that we've never done before. So we're trying it out and having fun. I cannot wait. If White Christmas is not on Netflix when we freaking need it. I will be pissed. Just so y'all know. White Christmas is the shit. If not watched White Christmas, come join us. Because if it's on Netflix, we will be watching White Christmas. Just so you know. It's at least one of my picks. Because sisters, sisters. Sorry. Tangent. <laughs> but yes, I hope you guys join us for the entire month of December. Reading some amazing books. <clears throat> and having the fun. If you want to double up on any of these, if you can find a book that hits all of them, go ahead. If you don't want to read the group book, read a book with an animal companion. All you have to do is read one book and you pass. It's all about having fun. Reading what you're in the mood for. If you're not into romance, see if any of these tropes will work for... I know a lot will work for thrillers and for fantasies. Because we all know fantasies have romance in them. Unfortunately. You can't have a book these days without 
some sort of romance in it, apparently. I am so ready for the cold weather and to celebrate this with you guys. Comment down below and let me know if you are going to be taking part in this. Are you excited? As excited as we are. I cannot wait to read this and interview Amanda Foodie. It's going to be so much fun. Um, I want to thank Amanda Foodie for taking the time out of her busy schedule to squeeze a little lesson. <coughs> and I want to thank you guys for wanting, because without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. But yep, that's all I've got for you guys today. Like I said, comment down below if you have any suggestions for any of the, the tropes that you guys think that others could use any books that are your favorites in those tropes that you think I might enjoy. You guys tend to know a lot of my reading tastes better than I do myself because I've had some of y'all go, why are you even trying to pick that up? You, I knew you were going to DNF that. I was like, oh, oh, because <laughs> I'm stupid. That's why. Because <laughs> I'm glutton for punishment. As y'all saw my TBR for this month. But yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you're new, hit that thumbs up. You might as well hit that subscribe. And I really hope you guys join us for the Merry Bookmas. It's going to be so much fun. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Remember, kids, always be fabulously yourself. Oh, boy! <laughs>